Welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and welcome back to another edition of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z. Today we're hitting you with the letter E and E is going to be for explosion. Yes, that is right, explosion. You hear a lot of these terms in manufacturing and production control like bomb for bill of materials and explosion. It all sounds very violent, but these are actually good things, right? So our bill of materials, what is our list of components or items that made up a assembled or manufactured good? And then an explosion is running through that bill of materials to estimate when we can make something, how much it costs to make something, do we have enough inventory to make something? So we're going to take a look at running an explosion from a customer service standpoint. I'm on the phone with a customer and they call up about a sales order that was just placed. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that sales order line and see how the explosion form can be used and what benefit I can gain from it, whether I am somebody in customer service or I am a planner or a production manager and I need to see the impact of a particular order on the supply chain and how all sides will be fulfilled. So here from my sales order lines, we can see that I have a sales order for D0001, this mid-range speaker. I'm going to go ahead and click on the product and supply button. And then under requirements, we'll hit explosion. What this form is showing me is how this particular sales order line will be fulfilled. And the intent of the form is to also highlight what shortages we have. What are the critical shortages? And you can see here this top line is bolded. So we actually do have some on hand inventory. We do have some production orders already scheduled to be completed that make up part of the demand but we still need to make more hence this is bolted now before i get into more of the specifics and drill down into the explosion and the meaning one thing i really like to do with this form is personalize it a little bit to make it more usable and, and reader friendly so we're going to right click and personalize this form personalize the page and click move we're going to take this format section and we're going to move it up above the grid of where all that information is and the reason for that is it aligns with these columns of the data we are seeing so it's a little bit more relevant for the person who's viewing this so we have our product name which is the mid-range speaker we have our item number our warehouse the required quantity for the transaction if that quantity is covered or not the requirement date, the date it's actually needed or due, the order date, the number, the reference number to the transaction and the reference type. So for example, the second line here is on production order P000252, my planned production order. My shortage that hasn't been scheduled yet is planned order 015139. So now that we've lined up the columns and the data. Let's go ahead and start to drill down into some of these carrots here and look at do we have enough inventory to actually produce against these production orders. So we know we have planned production order because we need to make some speakers and I can see I actually don't have any inventory for the bill of material that's going to go into that particular build. I don't have the wiring harness or the second wiring harness or uh, this first line where we have planned purchase orders for all of those as well. On my second production build, and it looks like we must have multiple bills of materials for this item with different effectivity dates because we see a slightly different bomb. I do have some inventory to produce to that build, so I have on hand inventory for the wiring harness, so I'm OK there. My tweeter speaker unit that goes into that range speaker, I don't have on hand inventory, but I have placed a purchase order, purchase order 51, which is scheduled to come in on March 31st and cover the demand for that item. But I do have shortages in the three other items in the bill material that make up that production unit. So I need a truck cab crossover and mid range speaker unit. So what this form is really telling me is what I need to focus on, and it helps me look at the shortages and align with the rest of the supply chain. If I need to call a buyer or I need to call someone in production to say, are there things we can expedite or are your 
purchase orders up to date. I can see some of that information here and I can go further into detail with it. So I want to go and look at that particular purchase order. I could access that from here. If I wanted to go into an explanation on any of these or look at critical on hand inventory, I could do that as well. The explanation tab is just that. It's a written explanation of each line in the full explosion. For example, we have our mid-range speaker. There is demand for this finished good coming via inventory issue type of sales order. So there's a demand, a quantity of 100. That's where we start. Master planning and the explosion then searches for open receipts. It says, is there production orders? or on hand inventory covering dates in the past all the way up to fulfilling this sales order, the date the sales order is scheduled to ship on. Do we have open receipts? Do we have open production orders or any other type of supply for this particular item at that site and warehouse? It found a receipt. It found on hand inventory that was available that wasn't allocated to another order. 29 pieces, essentially 29 units. So now we need to find additional inventory. We're still short 79 pieces. So it says, okay, now we're gonna search for the issue that must be covered for the remaining 79. Searches for open receipts over the time frame, and that site and warehouse finds another receipt type, this time a production order for five units in that time frame that's not allocated to another order, and it pegs that. And on and on until it can cover that line until there are no remaining receipts. And each line has its own blown out view of how that line was fulfilled. If there are calculated delays or features messages, those can be seen here as well, along with action messages. Any suggestions to update any of those existing orders? If there is a planned purchase order scheduled for a current date, should we be moving it in or out. If there's an existing purchase order or production order for any of these items, are there changes based on the master plan and explosion and calculation that should be edited? That explanation is really just the view of how we got all the, the information that is shown in the overview tab. It is the logic of master planning and the explosions. As a customer service rep, that's really valuable for me. I can see a lot of information now and understand if the data I'm promising the customer is realistic, and if it's not who I have to bug or talk to in order to fulfill this customer order. As you can see, I access this menu from the sales order lines, product and supply tab explosion. A lot of your transactional forms will have the explosion view available from it. If I go to the production control module and I look at all production orders, you'll see that that is one of the views here under the view action ribbon as well. Just under net requirements, you have explosion. If I go to any items and I'm in the net requirements, I can also access an inquiries explosion from there. So that's it for the letter E. Thanks again for Dynamics Unplugged. We'll see you next time for the letter F.